Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And uh, it's Wednesday night again, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna fire through these as, as fast as I can. And I'll probably post these out of order. I'm gonna record them in a certain order, but I'll probably post them in a different order. So if, depending on when you're watching this, this may be the third video I record. Well, this is the second video I recorded, but it may be the third or fourth one I upload. Uh, so yeah, just bear with me. I'm just trying to get everything out and uh, try to pace out things differently, try to get some Spidey content in here and some Venom content and catch up on King of Black and Spider-Man. I just want to catch up on everything. <laughs> so that's what tonight is. It's me just, I sat down, read a bunch of stuff today, took some notes, and now I'm trying to pin all this down. So we just finished talking about Last Remains in the last episode I recorded, but probably an episode or two ago from when it airs. And uh, and we talked about Last Remains and kind of wrapped up that story, kind of. But there is a two-part wrap-up called Postmortem, which is what we're going to talk about tonight, which is in uh, Amazing Spider-Man issues 56 and 57. So, uh, And that's also by Nick Spencer, Mark Bagley. Hopefully the title card is up there right now. And uh, this is Last Remains Postmortem, part one and part two. And this book is pretty neat because this kind of clarifies a, a few things, especially Kingpin's involvement. It starts off with him discussing like you know how he got here and like why he's working with Norman, uh, because obviously they work together at Ravencroft. And he, he thinks Norman is still evil, but Norman has been purged of his sins, and for some reason, Norman's sins have not gone back to him. A lot of the other sins have gone back to the people they came from, but Norman's didn't. Uh, so we don't really even really know where they went, actually, and not yet anyway. But so, you know, Kingpin's describing, you know, back when, uh, I guess, Hydra took over New York, and they, had, they used the spot to put the city in a protective bubble or whatever. Um, he made some deals like with, you know, the Daredevil and stuff like that. And, and then eventually uh, wanted to find the spot because he never forgot what kind of power that was and how his power was used uh, for something like that, like entrapping all of New York. So with Kingpin now being the mayor, uh, you know, Mayor Fisk, he was like, okay, I'm going to use all my resources of, as a criminal and as a politician now. And uh, I'm going to bring, uh, you know, I'm going to find the spot and capture him. So that's what he did. And so he has the spot, captured him, hooked up a machine to him, and that's what they used to trap Kindred um, at the end of the last issue, at the end of the last story. And so now they brought him back to Ravencroft where Osborn wants to help him. He's like, hey, you're my son and I'm here to help you. And he goes, but I know you know I'm not evil. He's like, I know you, for whatever you planned, you knew my sin wouldn't come back to me. All my sins would not come back to me. So I'm actually Norman Osborn. And of course, we're just going off his word here. We don't really know if he's good or not, or if he's just using this as the opportunity to play good. But I hope he really is good. I'll be honest with you. I, I really hope they do this because they've done everything else with Norman Osborn. And most of it sucks, in my opinion. But him actually being a good guy with like free of the, the sins he's done, he still has to atone for them, I feel. But him being a better person, I like this. Like, I really think you could tell really compelling stories uh, uh, with this. And I'm curious to see what happens. Like, because I feel like he's so good now that at some point, in order to save his son, he might take on the kindred identity to free Harry. And that's what I'm thinking they might go with. I don't know for sure. Obviously, I'm just kind of spitballing. But I think there might come a time where we're going to all start liking Norman, or that's Nick Spencer's goal, is to make us like Norman. So that way, when he makes a sacrifice at the end, we're going to hate it, you know, and I, that's just good writing. And I hope he does do that. Uh, but right now, I'm already starting to like Norman. He still has secrets, and he's still good at keeping secrets from people. But he's at at the he's just trying to do it so he doesn't get exposed basically so he's trying to protect himself so that he can protect the people he does love like harry um so while he's talking to uh, kindred kindred's not saying a single word back to him and then kingpin comes in and kingpin reminds kindred he's like remember you told i was begging on my knees when i saw you in in paris or wherever he was uh, many many moons ago in the early days of nick spencer's uh spider-man run and he's like i saw you and i begged on my knees for you to help me bring back uh, uh you know the, or find this tablet and help me so i can resurrect somebody and he goes and you told me no and he goes, and I handed my, I held my hand out to shake your hand. And he goes, and you said no. So now you're not getting the hand. You're getting the fist. <laughs> and he's like, and we're going to torture you and break you. And if we have to remove your power and uh, and give it to someone else who will do my bidding, we'll figure out how to do it. Um, so, so basically that's what he's, you know, he's threatening him. Uh, but Norman says, well, we made a deal, Fisk. You had your saying, you threatened, you know, our, our prisoner or whatever. So everyone leave. You told me I could have a, a few minutes alone with the patient to study him and, and examine him and try to get through to him psychologically. So you all need to leave. 
So uh, so he's like, all right, a deal's a deal. He's like, I'll give you your 10 minutes or whatever, and then I'm coming back in, and we're going to begin torturing the shit out of this guy. <laughs> so so uh, Norman's like, okay, fine, whatever. That was our deal. So Kingpin leaves, and Norman gets one-on-one -on -one time with Harry or Kindred, and he's trying to talk to him, and he's, like, explaining things, and it cuts back to the battle and how, like, Mary Jane, like I said, it, a bomb went off or a pumpkin bomb, but it wasn't, it didn't really kill her or hurt her. Um, it was just, like, a flash grenade, and it shows her and Peter, like, escaping with uh, the other members of the Order, um, and then it shows all the sins after Sin Eater shot himself, all going back into their original hosts, like Juggernaut and everything like that, and Morlin. So all of those villains are, are back on the street, back to normal, back to who they were. Even Overdrive, who is uh, driving around, who Carly Cooper found at one point he is now alive um picks her up on the side of the road and asks her out on a date <laughs> which i was like that could be cool that could be a cool story um so with overdrive dating carly cooper it's a cool way to keep her around but also uh what a mistake uh, you know and she even thinks that she's like oh i'm gonna date a criminal like that, that's that's kind of a mistake but and his sins have now kind of gone back into him but i feel like even though his sins went back into him he wasn't that horrible of a person uh, compared to other villains in the you know Marvel Universe too, he's done some heinous things, but like he mainly is a getaway driver pretty much and robs banks. So to me, I'm like, eh, she, yeah, she's not doing too bad actually. And uh, maybe she could, you know, they could balance each other out, you know, and he can be more well-rounded of a character, and then maybe she can learn to take a few risks here and there, you know, because she's kind of like a, a book nerd. So I don't know, I'm, I'm curious to see where that goes. And then this, which sets up our next story, we're going to talk about, which is Martin Lee shows up on Feast's doorstep, which Feast was a, a company or a group a shelter that he used to run that would feed homeless and, and house homeless people in New York. Um, and then he like he ran a, a business out of Chinatown and stuff. And all that, or at least the Feast uh, shelter went into the hands of Aunt May. And now she's the person who runs the business. Um, so he, Martin Lee, now that he's been separated from Mr. Negative, as we saw when Sin Eater did that a few, uh, like 10 or 12 episodes ago, or maybe more, um, we have, and I'll put a link, I'll try to put a link to the other Spider-Man videos down below in order so you can watch them all if you want to check them out. But uh, but yeah, so Martin Lee comes to uh, Aunt May and he's like, my sins are, they're following me. Like the sins of, uh, you know, Mr. Negative are, are in the air following, looking for Martin Lee and he needs to hide. So he's like, Aunt, you know, uh, May Parker, he doesn't call her Aunt May, but he's like, May Parker, can you please hide me? So that's going to set up the next story we're going to talk about. But uh, But while that's all going on, um, you know, we cut back to Norman talking about how they, when they captured uh, Kindred and he's like confessing everything. He's like, look, I'm still me and I believe you planned that. Why did you plan that? What do you want me to do now that I'm a good person? Like, why spare me? Like, please tell me. But before he gets an answer, Spider-Man busts through the window and he's like, no, we need to talk, Norman Osborn. So in issue 57 of Amazing Spider-Man, we get Last Remains Postmortem Part 2 by Nick Spencer and Mark Bagley again. And uh, in this one, we see the everything from the perspective of Peter and how he, after Mary Jane was okay, and after he went back in to see Kindred get captured, uh, he comes out and talks to Mary Jane and the Order. And they're like, what happened to you in there? And Peter, he can't say. He's like, he literally was killed like a dozen times and brought back. He saw all these moments from his life that hurt really badly. And he's like, I, I don't know. I, I can't say what happened to me. It's it's too much. And then Gwen like steps up and goes, no, like we risked our lives for you. You owe us an explanation. And, you know, people are like, hey, calm down, Gwen. Like we get it. You're mad and we've been through a lot. And you're right. He does owe us an explanation, but we're not going to get it right now. Like clearly he went through something. So he'll tell us when he's ready. And uh, and so Peter's like, yeah, looks at, you know, Madam Webb. He's like, thank you. And she's like, well, don't thank me. You know, like we, we, we all almost died. Um, and she's like, and the problem is, is like, you know, she's, I don't know if she can see anymore or maybe she can, maybe her power went back into her after Senator killed himself. But either way, like she knows more than she's letting on. Um, but she even admits to Gwen, like it, Peter's just Peter. Like he's predictable. I don't need to see the future to know what choices Peter Parker will make because his guilt like I said in the past video, is stronger than his superpower sometimes. So um, so he he succumbs to his guilt a lot. So she's like, so I'm wondering if that's a setup to where maybe at some point coming up, Peter won't succumb to his guilt and he'll actually do the really right thing again. And uh, I hope that's what's being set up by Nick Spencer here because they mentioned that like two or three times. And I'm like, please let that be a setup to something like good for Peter. Um, but so Peter's, you know, now back in present day, he's talking to, Norman 
and they're talking next to you know Harry, who is as kindred in the in the case. He's being he's still sealed in the the case created by the spot. Um, and Peter, he's given up. He's like, I don't want to help you guys. I don't want to help Harry. He's locked up in here, and I don't care what Kingpin does to him. And Norman's like, you don't mean that. You're just mad. You know, like just please, we can get through to him. We got to help him. He's my son. And then Peter's like, I don't even believe you, man. Like, he's like, you, all, everyone's sins go back except to you. He's like, that's not adding up either. And he's like, I don't want to have anything to do with this. He goes, if you want my help breaking him out of here and getting through to him, screw you. He's locked in there. He needs to stay in there. King Kim, Kingpin can do whatever he wants. And you, you can play this like, I'm good, I'm bad person, whatever you want to do, you do it. I'm not being, I'm going to not be involved anymore. He goes, but I will keep an eye on you, Norman. Um, and so while that's happening, we cut back to the order now that they call themselves the order and you have all the spider people like, well, what do we do? Like we've got caught up in another one of Peter Parker's messes and we got no answers and he's out, he's out in the wind now. What are we supposed to do? And Madam Web's like, don't worry, the time will come. Like we'll, we'll come back and we'll revisit this, you know, but for now we have, a, we have other things we got to work on and other things we got to do. So let's go do that. And when when the story when I guess when this story needs us again we'll come back to it. it feels kind of like that it's a little lazy um, so that that wasn't my favorite that moment there where they're like like Madame Webb's just like yeah we'll come back when we're needed I'm like okay I, if I were them I'd probably I'd probably demand answers from Peter um, but uh, whatever it's it's fine <laughs> uh, it's 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 a little bit like we got to button this up and move on to the next thing so the, a little criticism there but uh, but I do have some I mean not all of this is great but I am overall liking what Nick Spencer's doing. I find it a very, it's a very deep dive into these characters, their motivations, uh, who, what makes them, what makes them tick, uh, what makes them good, what makes them bad. And I'm kind of digging that, but it's all leading up to something that ties into one more day. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. Uh, so, you know, Peter, when he's talking to Norman, he's like, screw you guys, like you're on your own. And Norman's like, no, I can't let you leave. You got to help me save my son. And Spider-Man turns and just starts beating the crap out of Norman. Just pop, pop, pop. And uh, he's just beating the tar out of him. But he's beating him so bad that it, he starts reminding himself of when Kindred was beating his head in with the rock. And he stops. He can't, He pulls his fist back. And Norman actually looks terrified. His mouth is bleeding. He's looking up at Spider-Man. And he's like, please, please, like, don't hit me anymore. Like, what are you doing? And Spider-Man, you know, he's got bloody fists and everything. And he's just like... And he, re he looks over at Kindred and Kindred's kind of smiling and he's like, uh, he's like, you know, he, he's losing it. Like Peter's losing it. And uh, he, he jumps out the window and, and swings away, you know, scared of what he was capable of. And he sits there on, a, on the gargoyle that he sometimes hangs out on. He used to do that in the animated show too, which I really liked. Um, I think his name was Bruce the gargoyle. And, uh, and so he's sitting on the gargoyle. And while that's happening, we cut back to Norman and he's, uh, you know, looks uh it's being narrated by kindred and kindred's like you know peter you're out there you're free you're away from me isn't that what you always wanted and he goes and here i am inside trapped exactly where i want to be and so you realize okay like kindred kindred maybe did know this was going to happen and so you're like oh oh man and while that's going on we cut over to the morgue where carly cooper has been dropped off to work by her new boyfriend or maybe or her new date at least they're going to go on out for coffee um but she's at work at the morgue and she goes you know all the bodies that kindred dug up they're all you know tagged and in this morgue and they got to be returned to their proper grave so they need to be identified so carly is there as the mortician who's identifying all the bodies and she adds them all up and she's like, okay, um, Gwen Stacy, um, um, her, you know, her dad, uh, uh, George Stacy. And she's like, we have, uh, you know, I guess Ben Parker and like all these people. And then she gets to the last one and she goes, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. And then she goes, oh my God. She picks up her phone, tries to call Mary Jane and says, Mary Jane, the last body, you won't believe who it is. She's like, I need your help. I need your help. It's, and then she get her phone drops to the ground and that, kindred uh, bug thing this thing here uh, this big millipede centipede thing um it crawls uh over her phone and over her body um so we don't know if carly's dead i'm guessing she's just been knocked out or, or something um but she was trying to call to tell mary jane who the last body was i'm gonna guess that the last body is harry osborne's body um i don't know how <laughs> but but a harry osborne died and then a harry osborne was brought back uh who says he's been there for years and but we don't know that mephisto mephisto added 
a little something extra since Peter made the deal and gave up the child that him and Mary Jane never had. So they lost the child they never had and their love, right? But now they're starting to find their way back to each other, which I love that Nick Spencer's doing that. But we'll talk about the Mephisto stuff here in this episode, and, uh, but it's a couple issues from now, so we'll get there at the end of this episode. Uh, but, uh, you know, so this issue ends with Mary Jane. She's sleeping in bed. Peter shows up. He's had a long day. He, you know, you know, was thinking on the Bruce Gargoyle. And meanwhile, like I said, Kindred smiling. He's all happy. He's exactly where he wants to be. And Carly Cooper now is out of the picture. We don't know how, uh, but, uh, but it looks like there was another body. And like I said, I think it could be Harry's original body uh, because Mephisto had to put someone in place for Harry. And whether it's actually Harry or like a new manifestation or something, that was a theory my friend Gene had. And ever since he put that in my head, now I can't stop thinking about it, that there's two Harrys one in the ground somewhere buried in an unmarked grave and then whatever this thing is and that's what i think is the body carly cooper found so her missed call is showing up on mary jane's phone as peter comes into the window at mary jane's uh, place and she says it's not over yet is it and he goes no no it's not and they end with him sitting on her bed and her you know uh, laying next to him so i like like i said uh nick spencer since he's been on the book has Kind of picked up a little bit where Dan Slott left off, where Dan Slott started to lay the groundwork to bring Mary Jane and Peter closer together. But then Nick Spencer like separated them for a little while and had um, Mary Jane go off to L.A. and work on a movie with Mysterio, for, of all people. And in that mini or that maxi series, I guess it was like ten or twelve issues. And uh, and now she's back in New York, as we talked about in previous episodes of the Last Remain stuff, where she comes back and now she's been part of this story. But they're getting closer. Like uh, again, he's now in her room at night. And it looks like he might even stay the night with her. So, uh, so good, good for those kids. I always want them to get together. They're, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Peter and Gwen from back in the day. But uh, I've really, over the years, um, you know, because in the '90s they never really did too much with Mary Jane. Like, you know, she, I never really liked how a lot of the, the writers wrote her. Sometimes she has a couple good moments for sure. But a lot of times I felt like they didn't do too much with her. And I felt like Dan Slott did a little bit more with her. And then Nick Spencer and some of the writers currently have been doing a lot more with her. And I like that. They have actually made me more of a Mary Jane fan than I was before. Um, so kudos to them for sure. Uh, but then we have issue 58 here and 59. This is a two-part story by Nick Spencer and Marcelo Ferreira. And this is a kind of, a, it's called like negative something. It's basically about, I think it's negative space part one and two. And this is essentially a Mr. Negative story, but it is following up on the stuff that's been happening. So we have Peter going to see Liz Allen. He's talking to her about Harry and he starts revealing to her like, look, I got to tell her the truth. And she's like, what are you hiding from me, Peter? And he goes, Harry is wearing a villain costume again and doing bad things. He's not actually in Paris or London or wherever he's telling you he's for work. He's here in New York, you know, in a costume hurting people. And she's like, I can't believe it. And then and then um, Normie shows up and Normie says, it's true. Like, and I'll show you. And if you remember, we talked about this in Venom vlog where Normie showed in one of the issues for leading up to King and Black or leading up to uh, maybe it was Venom Island before ben Venom Island took place. It was just the issue about uh, Dylan and Normie. And they were like hanging out with the Carnage symbiote or whatever, like that sliver of it. And so uh, in that issue, Normie showed Dylan that there's a secret closet in this parent's bedroom that had goblin gear. So that's what Normie does. He comes down, he says, mom, I'm not a kid anymore. He's like, you know, and of course a lot of kids say that, but he's like, I'm not a kid anymore. You know, follow me upstairs. And he, and so her and Peter follow Normie up to the room and he opens the door and he reveals the goblin gear. And she's, Liz, Liz is ready to pass out. She like, she gets weak in the knees. Peter grabs her and he looks back and he goes, well, this clinches it. Like it's definitely Harry because Peter still has doubt that it's actually Harry. I have doubt that it's actually Harry. I mean, not the Harry I, I think we know. Like, I'd like I, I believe my friend Gene about uh, where he has this theory about something either possessing a body of Harry's or the actual body of Harry still dead somehow um, or buried somewhere and this being something else. Uh, so um, uh, I don't know. I'm really curious. Or I don't know, Liz uh, or Carly Cooper, when she was like, hey, we're, we have another body here. I don't know whose it is or I know who it is. And before she says anything, like I said, I think she's going to say Harry, um, which will then make everyone wonder what this uh, this thing is that is Kindred. Um, but I, I also am like, eh, it probably won't be. It'll probably be something else that is lamer <laughs> uh, but because uh, I always feel like fan theories including myself whenever I have fan theories I always feel like they're more complicated than the writer 
uh, intends them to be. So it's always like, oh, what if they did this and connected this and this? And the writers are usually like, nah, I'm not going to go that complicated with it. So I don't know. We'll see what Nick Spencer does. But I think that would be a cool another twist of like, oh, we all thought it was Harry. And then we got revealed it was Harry. And we're like, ah, see, told you. And then we find out it's something that's not exactly Harry. I think that'd be a cool twist. Um, so anyway, so uh, at that time, they get a knock on the door. And it's uh, Norman Osborne. And Norman shows up. And him and Peter get into an argument. And Liz runs out and argues. And she's like, what did you do to our, you know, my, you know, my husband, your son? Like, what have you done? Like, you turned him back into a monster or a goblin thing. And he's like, it's not me. I'm trying to save him. It's like, you have to really believe me. And, uh, and he goes, and Peter, I came here for you because uh, there's something happening. He's like, uh, I, was, oh, I was at the lab. And, I, you know, they're working on... Uh, you know, Kingpin and stuff are working on and torturing Kindred. And he goes, and I overheard them uh, say that they're tracking Mr. Negative and they're tracking his uh, his demons, like his so uh, soldiers or Foot Clan or whatever. They tracked them to the, the feast facility where they're going to attack. And he's like, so uh, you need to get over there ASAP. And so Peter's like, all right, I got to go. Liz, I'm sorry, I got to go. So Peter goes and, uh, you know, saves Aunt May. And when he gets there, he sees that Aunt May is trying to protect Martin Lee who is just human. He's not Mr. Negative. So, uh, so Spider-Man's like, okay, we got to protect Martin Lee. And he's fighting back against all the, the demons and stuff. And meanwhile, you know, we have, uh, you know, Kingpin again, telling a story to uh, Kindred and then, uh, but Kindred saying nothing. Like he hasn't said a single word in like four issues or whatever, or three issues that he's been locked up. He said nothing. Uh, so I'm, I'm really digging that, <laughs> that aspect uh, a lot. He's like just saying nothing. So, um, so this issue ends with uh, one of the demons showing up saying, Hey, we've, We've now tracked Martin Lee to this location at, at Feast. Um, you know, like for sure it's him. Like we, you know, we sent people over there to investigate, but now we, we're sure it's him. So, um, so you know, what do you want us to do? And he's like, uh, he's like, I'll be right there. So it looks like Kingpin's going to get involved and go check out what's going on with with Mister Negative. So uh, issue fifty nine shows up. We got Negative Space Part Two, and in this one, uh, we have uh, starts off with Norman and Liz having a heart to heart on the opposite sides of a door. So like she shut him out and he's like begging, like, please, you have to believe me. I am not the guy you knew. Uh, and a lot of weird things happened tonight, but here's what went down. And he's basically trying to get her to open up. He's like, I'm literally just here to save, uh, to save Harry. And I want your help. And we might need Normie's help too, because Spider-Man kind of turned his back on me. And so, uh, so he's kind of trying to get through to them. And uh, while he's doing that, he does have a moment where he goes and sits outside with Normie at the end of the book, but we'll get there in a second because now we got to cut back to the, the feast facility where Spider-Man is, is kind of winning, but it looks like the tides are starting to turn. He's getting overwhelmed by the amount of demons and Martin Lee doesn't see any choice because May, uh, Aunt May has been held captive and she could die. And Martin Lee says, no, don't kill her. Look, if you want me to return as Mr. Negative, I will yield. And he goes, so he backs up. And, uh, and he says, you know, he looks at Aunt May and he's like, I'm going to try to be better. When, when the sins come back to me, I will do my best to be better. And she, he goes, but I can't promise you anything. He's like, so this may be goodbye. So he steps out, he goes outside, outside the building and he looks up in the sky and his sins that were waiting for him out there come down, repossess him. And he becomes Mr. Negative again. And right when he does, the Kingpin shows up with uh, the demons that were, went and got Kingpin and they arrest uh, Mr. Negative, but uh, they're not really doing it. A bunch of cops and SWAT members show up. Turns out they're all in Kingpin's pocket, and you know he's like, "Spider-Man, look, I'm just here to arrest the bad guy." You know, I, I got wind that he was going to be here, and Spider-Man's like, "I'm not buying that." He's like, "I know how you know he's here." Blah blah blah. And so he's like, "He's like, oh really? Do tell." You know, and Spider-Man's like, "Whatever." He's like, uh, "Fine, take him." You know, as long as the as long as this place doesn't get burned down and this you know woman doesn't get hurt. You know, talking about Aunt May, he's like, "Fine, take him into custody and leave." So, of course, you know, Kingpin does. And while he's walking away with Martin Lee, Mr. Negative, he's like, we have a deal. I will give you back your Chinatown land. I'll give you back anything you want except Feast. You know, it looks like there's an owner of that already. He's like, but I'll give you back all your old criminal territories. And in exchange, you're going to help me find this tablet uh, that will help me, uh, the tablets of life and death and stuff, and help me get all the things I need for this resurrection spell, basically. Uh, so it looks like Martin Lee knows where that stuff is. And he's going to work out a deal with Kingpin. Uh, so then we have Peter going to talk to Aunt May and, you know, kind of patching things up, checking in on her. And she's like, it's okay. I was scared. But and Martin Lee really was trying to do the right thing. And, and then he, 
he willingly became an evil again or allowed evil to go back into him just to save us like you know and i kind of like that because it's a little bit of a parallel like peter did an evil thing by making a deal with mephisto to save aunt may and and so in this case martin lee did something similar as well i kind of thought that was a neat little parallel there um and then we have norman like i said uh on the roof of the house sitting with normie and trying to get through to him and normie of course hates his grandfather but uh even though he used to love him at one point in the 90s but here, he, you know, they're, they're kind of distant over the years because of the Red Goblin stuff but uh, and, and other things, obviously. But uh, but Norman is here trying to get through to him. And he's like, we can. I think I can help save your dad. And then he's like, but let's go back inside. Like, let's not sit up here on the roof. It's dangerous. Let's go back inside. And as he brings Normie back in, Harry, or not Harry, but Norman looks over and, uh, and sees Spider-Man keeping tabs on him like he said he would. Uh, so then the book ends and we have uh, Kingpin making that deal with, with uh, Mr. Negative and he says all right but if you're going to honor this deal you, you know to get me this other tablet I need for this spell you're going to have competition so if you want all your territories back you're going to have to fight for it and then he opens up a room and there's like tombstones in there and uh, Hammerhead and the Owl and all these villains so apparently all of them got deals made with Kingpin and whoever finds him that tablet first I guess is going to you know get the deal they're going to get what he promises so, uh, so the last issue we're going to talk about today is Amazing Spider-Man 60. This might be the last one we talk about for a while. I don't know if I'm going to continue to follow the story. I think the new issue that's coming out next is uh, going to be about his new costume. And I'm sure Kindred and everything will still play a part in it. But until something major happens, um, I think I'll probably wait and not cover anything else until they wrap up the story um, which they may do i don't know when i don't know if they're actually going to go up to issue 100 with this or if they'll cap it off around issue 75 or anything like i don't know what's next for spider-man i haven't kept up with the solicits but this issue feels like a good place to step away from and until we see more about the uh, one more day connections i think i'll just put a pin on this for now but this issue is a good one to end on because i think this does clearly state that this is all going to be connected to one more day somehow so this is called no exit and the title card should be up there with nick spencer and mark bagley uh, once again coming back together to do the book it's so great to see bagley drawing spider-man again i love all these issues where he does the art but this one is a single standalone story where uh peter this feels like a very big epilogue to a lot of the stuff we've been getting lately and it's it's really it's very character driven um actually in fact normally i would not be a fan of like one character monologuing for like four or five pages but this is actually done pretty well because there's a psychological element to it that adds a little bit more to the layer of just giving out a monologue mary jane brings peter to an old play like an old uh, theater where she used to you know perform and it's like run down and everything kind of shut down and so he's she brings him there turns on the spotlight and says look we're going to do a an acting exercise Kindred really wanted you to admit something that you can't seem to remember. Do you think it's like a buried memory of some kind? And he's like, I, I guess maybe it could be. And she's like, okay, well, let's see if we can't unlock that memory. So he goes, well, what should we do? And he goes, just stand up on stage. I'm going to sit here in the chair. You pretend I'm Kindred and then just pour, you know, Kindred slash Harry and just pour everything out you want to say. Good, bad, whatever. Just get it all out. So for a few pages, Peter just monologues and he's like saying, I wish I did this better. I wish I did that better. What I kind of like and I kind of don't like, usually in comics, I want, you know, it's like movies. You want to show and not tell. But there are some times where it's like, okay, someone's telling things. It's not so much exposition, but it's just emotional stuff. So the camera locks onto that character. So sometimes you'll get that in movies. Like Tarantino does it really well and other people where they just lock onto somebody and let them just go. That's what this is. Every shot is an angle of Peter Parker dealing with this an emotion. He's like he's like uh, intense in one panel, then he's like has his hand and his face in his hands in another panel. He's like frustrated, he's making fists, and then he screams out in another panel. And it's just him going through all these emotions, and it ends with Mary Jane getting out of her chair and holding him. And during all that, he's just like, I'm sorry, I don't know what you want from me. I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to do this. Like th these are the things I can remember that maybe you think i wronged you on some of the stuff you already said here's some other things that weren't said and he's going on and on he's trying to go down the spiral of remembering and he doesn't uh so mary jane holds him and then they kiss 
and uh, it seems like they're definitely getting back together. Uh, it, I mean, clearly. So um, unless it's like all part of something that Mary Jane's working on, because there's a twist here with Mary Jane uh, that I wasn't expecting. Peter is like, uh, she's like, do you feel better? And he goes, I do. He goes, I don't know. I, I know I didn't get the thing I needed to get out, out but I, I could f just trying to made me feel better. And, uh, and she's like, good, we'll, we'll try this again another time. And he's like, well, I got to go. Like, I, you know, he heard about some danger or something. So he's got to go like be Spider-Man. So he leaves and she walks out of the theater, sees him whip off. And then she goes back into the theater and Mysterio's there. Uh, the guy who made the movie that she's starring in because he was, you know, Peter was like, well, are, if I go stop this crime, this criminal, are you going to, when I get back, are you going to be gone? Are you going back to LA? And she goes, no. I li I'm, I'm moving back to New York. And he goes, but your movie, like, and she goes, oh, I filmed all my movie. If they need me to do ADR or anything like that, I can do it from here. Um, and she goes, and we're going to, I'm going to ask them to move the premiere here. And he's like, you can't do that. Like, you know, like this is your life. I don't want to, I don't want to be the reason your career is ruined. And she's like, it won't be, I'm coming back to New York. So when he leaves, she, Mysterio's there and she goes, what did you hear? And he goes, he goes, ah, I heard you talking to your boyfriend. He's like, I don't know. I was bored. I wasn't listening. And she goes, yes, but she goes, uh, but he goes, what about all the stuff about moving to New York and everything? He goes, yeah. He goes, I don't want to move the premiere here. He goes, but whatever. He goes, uh, if that's what you want, um, I guess, you know, I'm from here. It's my hometown. So, okay, we'll do the premiere here. Like twist my arm or whatever. She goes, but what about the other stuff with Kindred? And he goes, I, I don't know. He goes, I, like I said, I got bored of your boyfriend. <laughs> and he goes, but you know about Kindred. Like, you know what he really is, don't you? And must, cause, and I thought this was neat because Mysterio has been dead and been to hell. And he was brought back uh, not too long ago. So I really liked that, that this is part of the story, that their Mysterio not only directed Mary Jane's movie, and they've kind of like, you know, I guess become professional friends uh, in a way, and he's not really doing evil anymore. So she asked him, like, what do you know about Kindred and, and, uh, and the fact that he's been to hell and back? And Mysterio goes, you don't want me to tell you. He's like, there are some things better left unsaid. And he's like, she's like, I don't care. The, the fate of people I love is at stake here. You need to tell me what's going on. And then at that moment, we cut to Doctor Strange, who I guess got out of the dreamscape and defeated the the demon Mary Jane, I guess. Uh, now he's walking into, uh, it looks like Las Vegas, which this is a continuity error if it is, because in Las Vegas, um, they locked up uh, Mephisto in a room that was chained up. But Ghost Rider in the Ghost Rider comic, uh, Johnny Blaze broke Mephisto out and has been dragging him around the U.S. Uh, during a lot of the events that have been going on recently, especially in the Ghost Rider book. And then eventually they they stopped Ghost Rider, and I think they took Mephisto back, but he's not free of, like, you know. So when Doctor Strange walks into this casino, it's just a bouncer and a door, and then he walks in and he's just freely talking to M Mephisto. And I'm like, but wouldn't Mephisto be caged up again? And wouldn't Wong be protecting him like he was in the Ghost Rider book? So I don't know. I don't know what's what this continuity error is here um, because it's been pretty good in all the other times when they reference other books that are happening at the same time. But for some reason, this seems a little off unless it's happening before the Ghost Rider book. But even then, he'd still be caged up. So I don't I don't really know where the where this story lies. Um, but either way, Doctor Strange shows up and he walks into the he knocks the bouncer out, walks into the room and sees Mephisto and he te he asks him, what did you do to Peter Parker's soul? Like, what's wrong with it? And that's where the book ends. And I'm like, oh, it's so good. So good. So um, what is wrong with the soul? I don't know. The new issue isn't out. I haven't read it. Um, and or maybe it came out uh, today or something. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm behind on Spider-Man. But uh, but yeah, but this is where we're going to end for now, because I think it's a good spot to end on. It builds a lot of mystery, you know, and I think if they do ever answer this or do scenes that, you know, touch on this and, and other stuff, we can discuss them all in one video later and maybe conclude all of this. And we can just make one maybe hour long video where we wrap up all the Nick Spencer stuff or something, depending on how many more issues it goes, we'll see. But for now, I think this is a good stopping point and this at least catches us up to the current book. So if you wanna know more about what happens from here on out, in case I don't make videos on it, go pick up Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man by Nick Spencer every month from Marvel. It's awesome. Um, I've been really digging it. It's not, like I said, not every issue is a, a knock it out of the park. I just, you know, just some, uh, some of the issues have good scenes in them, but they might not be well structured or well paced or whatever. I get that a lot of times with, with some of these issues, but I do, and there's like little continuity mix-ups like this one. I feel like it's a continuity mix-up, 
But overall, I've been enjoying what they're doing and that they're building towards one more day because I think that's the that story you have, you know, that it really impacted fans. Like it really messed up fans. Like there are a few people I think out there that like one more day, but majority of fans really were just upset about what happened. And they just didn't like that Peter and Mary Jane agreed to make some deal with Mephisto. Um, and I agree. I mean, as flawed as those characters can be sometimes and bad decisions they make, that just seems like the mother of all bad decisions, in my opinion. Uh, so now that that's going to come undone, what does that mean? Does that mean we're going to lose Aunt May again? Um, because honestly, I mean, she's an older character. Like at some point, she'll probably have to be gone in the comic books. And I, I, but I would hate for her to go after learning Peter made a deal to keep her around for so many more years, because I think she would be mad at Peter for that. But then again, while she's been back, she's been married she's had a new life she's got to work at a shelter help homeless people help uh, andy in the screen book like she's made a big impact since she's been back so it would not that she didn't before but she mainly made an impact on peter's life now she's made an impact on the marvel universe in a lot of ways so i'd really hate to lose aunt may now and i think if they do pull this thread and undo that deal aunt may goes with it and I, i'm really nervous about that so hopefully it doesn't end in that kind of tragedy for peter i hope this works out to where he is okay and he can go back to you know we could go back to like fun loving spider-man stories again but they do need to pull this thread at some point they need to find a way to um either undo that story or or make it still count in continuity but build off of it and change it you know and i think that's what nick spencer's trying to do he's trying to take his time pulling that thread because if he just did it all at once he would just be making another one more day if he just said oh undo the deal and everything goes back to normal then he would be erasing the last like 10 years of spider-man books or 10 plus years and i think anyone who's been a fan of these 10 plus years then they'll be pissed off the way a lot of us were pissed off when they undid the 20 years before that so he, he it looks like he's not trying to do another one more day by just erasing everything he's trying to carefully do this and i respect that and hopefully he does and hopefully he does it well so uh, with these issues here, 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. And now I'm going to go make some Venom vlog episodes where we actually talk about King and Black stuff. And that'll be it for tonight because it's already getting late and, uh, and I have work tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.